I don't I don't even know if I can say this on on YouTube, but there was like on the back wall behind the toilet, it was just yeah. McDonald's is a huge part of my testimony because I had a boss that hated me. I mean, I don't know what it was about my face, about my height, about whatever, but he did not like me at all. And the truth was, I was slow. I, I was slow on making sandwiches, right? And so he would pull me off the, the, I don't know what it's called, but he would pull me off the sandwich making table and he would send me to do certain things like mop outside. And there was just one time where he pulled me off the table. And now by this time, after you pull me off a couple times, I'm, I'm gonna work on my speed, okay? I'm gonna work on making sandwiches faster. And so I felt like I was one of the fastest people in the McDonald's at this time. But I had the reputation, he already started pulling me off the table. And so, you know, even though I'm making sandwiches fast, I get pulled out. And he took me into the women's restroom. And man, I don't even know if I can say this on, on YouTube, but there was like on the back wall behind the toilet, it was just, yeah. And, and it was like a period pad, like in there. It was just like, it was a horror movie when I walked in. He just started yelling at me, like clean it up now. I don't even remember what happened. I know I had to clean it and it got cleaned and he didn't help me, he watched me clean it. Well, anyway, so that was a traumatic experience. And that traumatic experience, when I came to church the next Sunday, like something was different inside of me. There was this one weekend where we were gonna bring in the new year at a club. And I couldn't go because my mother, for some reason, she put her foot down. Like she would let me go to clubs anytime I wanted to. But for this time, she was like, no, you're gonna bring in the new year at church. I don't even remember what was preached. I don't remember what they talked about. But I remember I made a decision that I was gonna give my life to Jesus. Like, and it wasn't like give my life, like get saved. I don't even, I don't know if I knew I wasn't saved, but I knew like I wasn't living my life for God. Like Jesus wasn't Lord of my life. And so in this moment, I gave my life to Jesus. I said, Lord, you are going to rule my life. And I wanna encourage some of you right now that when you make this decision to give everything to Jesus, you know you're not right with the Lord. You know that you're away from God. You know that you've been sinning. You know that you've been betraying Him. You know that you have a purpose. You know that God has created you for something specific, but you're not living it. Sometimes you talk about the Bible, maybe you know about the Bible, but the truth is your life does not line up. And so I wanna let you know that just like me, the next day I go in and no one's talking to me. I felt like I only had three friends, literally, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And some of you, you're gonna have to leave relationships. Some of you, you're gonna have to turn away from the life that you've been living with the people you've been living with. Some of you, you're gonna have to move out. Some of you, you're gonna have to move away. But I wanna let you know that when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, it's not only that you know that you're going to heaven when you die, but the Lord, He changes something on the inside of you where something shifts. And now when you look at the world, when you look at your life, you have gratitude, you have peace, and you have love. And I wanna let you know that there's nothing more fulfilling than walking in your purpose. Maybe you feel like your life looks like that woman's restroom where you don't even know how it got that bad. How is it even possible for your life to stink that much? You know, maybe it's kind of similar to that women's pad on the ground and you don't understand, but there's just blood on your hands. You're going in cycles that you don't even understand. And every month, every two weeks, every three weeks, you're falling back into a cycle of sin where you feel like you're in a horrible pit in your life just stinks. You know, maybe it's not the best analogy, but I wanna let you know that Jesus Christ came all the way from heaven and he came to this earth and he walked a sinless life, a life that we couldn't live. He broke every cycle for you. And I wanna let you know that he went to the cross and he bled from each hand. He bled from his head. He bled from his feet. He was bleeding and crying out for you to be forgiven. And I wanna tell you right now that you have the opportunity to turn to Jesus to turn away from your sins. And so if you wanna make the decision to turn away and to really make Jesus the Lord and the master of your life, I want you to say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I choose to follow you. I make you the Lord of my life. Save me now. In Jesus name. Amen. I want to ask you that if you said that prayer with me and you meant it and you really want to change direction and follow Jesus, I want you to put I pray that prayer in the comments. I want you to put it there so I can encourage you and we can walk together. Make sure that if you haven't already, 
follow or subscribe for more because I'm gonna have so much more content. I'm gonna have videos that really talk to you about what are your next steps after you give your life to Jesus. I'm gonna have videos that talk about why it's so hard to pray or why it's so hard to read the Bible in the beginning, but the benefits of doing both. And I actually have a one-on-one -on -one discipleship coaching mentoring program that you can also look into. But I wanna encourage you today that this is just the beginning of the rest of your life. And the Lord, He has a plan for you. And I want you to know that Jesus, He loves you so, so much. And no matter what happens, He's with you. God bless you.